result of his advantageous seeding position. And another tie further up the order, Aniol Jalabert and uh, Gabriel Marseille. Jalabert only second out through the sections, walked away with just seven marks. But a series of errors from the rest of the field left him up in second place. A highly creditable performance. Uh, only one mark short, actually, of Tony Bowe, who took the first World Championship point of the evening and moves himself on to 22 overall. So now seven up on Gabriel Marseille in those championship standings. Outstanding first effort from Marco Mempor as well. The uh, event wildcard was the first man out through the sections and he dropped three marks from the opening three. He did fail the final two, ran out of time rather, and uh, that has left him somewhat up against it, but still ahead of the likes of Toby Martin and Matteo Grattarola. Top three move through to today's grand final. So for Grattarola, 14 marks to make up and that looks impossible. He can only hope to uh, put in the lowest possible score here and uh, expect that others might make errors that bring him back into contention, at least to avoid the basement position because he did finish ninth and last at the opening round in Barcelona as well. Here is the veteran 35-year-old Matteo Grattarola. He'll be first out through the sections in round number two. As I said, 21 marks on the board, so six short of his nearest rival in round number one, which was Toby Martin on 15. So Grattarola, you almost fancy at this stage already just riding for pride. First drop mark of the second round for Grattarola. These rocks were tackled in the opposite direction in round number one. That's some good work uh, from the Italian. Moreno Piazza watching closely as his fellow countryman makes his way through the section. He was just trying to get a look at the bottom of the bike there to see if the sump had taken a mark for leaning, but uh, remains on just a single mark thus far. Grattarola pressing on through and with some speed as well. Lining himself up for the remaining Rock Island and the exit gate. Over three minutes remaining on the clock then for Matteo Grattarola. 35-year-old veteran, such a tough start it's been to his 2023 campaign. Makes his way through the exit gate of section one. And what a relief that will be for him because he had four consecutive failures at the end of round one. Got through the first section and then after that rather crumbled. So uh, he now moves on to 22 marks. Of course, the maximum possible score is uh, 25 for each of the runs. And Toby Martin, even if he were to fail all of them, uh, would only finish on 40. Grattarola's already on 22, and he's going to pick up another couple here at very least. He tries to make his way through the trunks, again in the opposite direction to what we saw in the opening round. Another mark now lost for Grattarola. Any further drop marks in the remainder of this section, it will be a first failure of the run for Grattarola. And there it is. That's going to be one for leaning, so that'll be a fiasco. Section two will move him on to six marks. So a score now of 27 overall. Grattarola at the back of the pack and somewhat cut adrift of the pack as well. Remember, did uh, have a, an interrupted pre-season with uh, injury worries. Had uh, a muscle injury that required an operation back in January. He was struggling to adapt to the bike already in a pre-season uh, trial in Sheffield. He really struggled and uh, suffered a knee injury just before Extra Barcelona. Still isn't at full fitness, still hasn't had a lot of time to get used to the bike after moving to the Vertigo factory during the winter. And you'd assume that's playing on these, frankly, uh, poor early season performances. Grattarola looking good though in section three. Remember, had a really rough first round at uh, Extra Barcelona, but his second run was actually pretty decent. He just left himself with too much work to do. So can he finish on a high note with another strong second round? We're about to find out. Section three, and very swift work through there, and it needs to be because, of course, in round two, the five sections of, that comprise the course have to be completed in only four minutes. First clean of the night then there for Matteo Grattarola, who remains on 27 overall. One minute to complete two sections, and a big step that he now faces in this section four. This could be a real challenge for several of the riders, but not for Grattarola. He will take a single mark for footing on his way up. The uh, right foot going down, another big ramp here. 
real industrial theme to the uh, layout of the sections here tonight. Right, so right, less than 30 seconds on the clock. He's going to try and make sure in this one. There goes another dab. That will move him on to two. As I say, just trying to make this section safe because he's not going to have time to tackle the last of them. He's only got 10 seconds to get through to the end of this one. He does so successfully. He does see a little bit more work to do. Watched on closely. I don't think he's going to make it here. It's going to be tight. We'll wait for official confirmation. It looks like two marks. Did Gratarola make it to the end of the section in time? It was very, very close. Well, we'll give you the score there for Gratarola as soon as possible. It is given as a two-mark score in section four. So that will move him on to eight, which is 29 overall. The problem is he then uh, ran out of time. So it'll be a five-mark score in section five as well. So it's 13 for round two for Matteo Gratarola. And uh, an overall score of 34. So 13 marks for round two, 21 marks in round one, 34 his combined score. Toby Martin sits on 15 after his opening outing here tonight. 22 year old, Great Britain's number one, of course. And next trials uh, number one from Great Britain since the retirement of James Dable. Four minutes for five sections. Speed is absolutely of the essence because the second round is much longer tonight in Wiener Neustadt than it was first time out in Extra Barcelona. The sections uh, in the Palau San Jordi rather took into account the fact that uh, there was only four minutes on the clock for round two. Here tonight, it's the riders that are being asked to push a little bit harder and uh, find something extra. Toby Martin is rushing through quite well, you'd have to say, in this section one. Around about 30 seconds used. And the first section complete. Strong ride there from Martin. No time to waste between the sections. Even Moreno Piazza's having to, uh, to get a jog on here. Unfortunate for him that the layout is such that section two is, uh, is a little bit of a trot. Uh, easier for the machine power of the Montessa of uh, Toby Martin. Section number two then. And straight into it with uh, a left foot dab. Uh, first trunk requiring a little bit of stability for Martin. So that's the first mark dropped. He will continue on though. This is where Matteo Gratarola got himself into difficulties, ended up failing this section too. Another drop mark now for Martin, who looks over at the section observer. He knows he's been spotted. Alex Wig will wait for him. Martin leaps across and that receives a round of applause from the crowd here in the arena. Nova, well-deserved too. He's made it further than Matteo Gratarola did before him. It is going to leave him under time pressure, this, of course. Toby Martin slips forward, another dab. And uh, will that... Martin looks as though he's protesting something, so it's a uh, failure for Toby Martin in section two, an accumulation of marks. That moves him on to 20 overall. That's unfortunate because it had been good riding up to then, but it's obviously a challenging section. A little bit of time lost uh, arguing the toss, you'd say, there with uh, Moreno Piazza, who's never going to change his mind about the score there. And Toby Martin, 15 marks and eighth position after round number one, will now try and get back into the X trial. He's got Marco Mempor two marks ahead of him after round one. Four marks ahead of him, Ragger and uh, Binkas. Five marks ahead of him, Jaime Busto. The grand final spaces look out of reach at eight points up. And uh, with another five dropped already for Toby Martin. One and a half minutes to go. Halfway through this uh, section three and therefore halfway through his second run. So uh, really, really tight on time again. Just as Matteo Gratarola was before him. This is going to be a tough second round. Already uh, quite evident. So section number three falls to a clean for Toby Martin. Remains on five, remains on 20. Can't be beaten now by Matteo Gratarola at uh, Extra Vina Neustadt. Big step to start us off, but no great difficulties for Martin as there were for uh, Matteo Gratarola before him. Gratarola finished this section four on two marks. The first of them was taken on this step. Toby Martin has 50 seconds on the clock. Oh, and he's down. It's a five-mark score in section four. And Martin now needs to collect himself as swiftly as possible because there is still section five for him to have a go at. It's going to be tough with the, uh, the time he's got. 
And it looks as though not only did the bike need restarting, he had to move the handlebars into position as well. And I don't think Martin's going to be able to do anything more here. 26 seconds to have a go at section five. We've already seen in the opening round how difficult it is to get up this tower, this uh, staircase into the grandstands here at the Arena Nova. 34 was the finishing total of Matteo Grattarola. Toby Martin has given up for section five. So it is going to be three failures in the second run for Toby Martin to finish on a 15 mark total, 30 uh, overall. So two drop marks more than Matteo Grattarola who only suffered two fiascos. But uh, obviously Grattarola was six marks down after round one. So uh, four of those marks remain intact for Martin. Your score then, Toby Martin 30, Matteo Grattarola 34. Well, how about this young man, Marco Mempor, third up after finishing at seventh in the opening round of action here in Wiener Neustadt tonight. He was all smiles, he was receiving congratulations from everyone, but only half of the job is done. Austria's brightest star for some years, no doubt about that, Marco Mempor. First in decades, really, to uh, commit to international competition. His nearest training ground growing up was some 50 kilometers away from his home. So uh, since 2018, he's been training extensively in Pierre in Catalonia. And Marco Mempor with a tough start to section number one. Down he goes. A five mark score there. He'll now move in to section two. And this one's been failed by both Matteo Grattarola and Toby Martin. Marco Mempor, though, has a great deal more time on the board after an early failure in his opening outing. That moves him on to 18 marks overall. Big first step. And Mempor makes sure with the left foot going down for it. Single mark for footing. This was a very tough section for each of the two previous riders to attempt it. Ratarola got stuck here. Martin made it a little further, but accumulated too many marks. Mempor still on just one for now. Trying to balance the tyre. Peters off to the left and puts a foot down to, again, Stabilise himself, that's going to be a third mark, one for leaning, he lands it, but he lands it on the sun. So any further drop marks will be a failure here in section two for Marco Mempor. Needs perfection from here on in, and that's going to be a tough task. Mempor, the event wild card, seventh after the opening round, to stay in seventh, he needs to finish on the 30 marks or better, so that's a failure for Mempor, just on the land before he fell out of the section anyway. Moving him onto a maximum score of 10, unfortunately for him. 23 overall, so he's only got seven to play with now to remain ahead of Toby Martin. Second round, uh, an increased level of difficulty. One minute less in terms of time. And Marco Mempor has been suffering thus far. Section three, cleaned by the two men before him. A drop mark though for Mempor, and he's slightly stuck at this stage. Tries to bring the front wheel back into the section. Oh, how can he do this without avoiding, uh, without slipping down to a five mark score? He's just sliding around on the sub and down he goes. Eventually has to concede. There was no way out of that uh, situation for Marco Mempor. So he moves now onto 15 for the run, 28 overall, only two up on Toby Martin. And I think Marco Mempor looks likely to drop down the pecking order here. And there is every chance he could also end up behind Matteo Grattarola. Uh, Grattarola was on 27 at the same stage with two sections to go and he scored seven from the final two. So Marco Mempor could do with getting out of this section with a single mark at the absolute most. But frankly, he needs a clean hit because otherwise he's going to be left needing to do something in section five and nobody's made it through there yet. So section four, up goes Marco Mempor, single drop mark for leaning. And I suspect that Marco Mempor could be dropping to the bottom of the pile here. He moves now on to 29. A failure in the final section would move him on to 34. And uh, obviously Matteo Grattarelli would have the better score in round two. So Mempor now needs to get through not only the remainder of this section four, but also the whole of section five. He's only got 45 seconds to do it. So I'm afraid that after an excellent first round and first ride from Marco Mempor, this looks likely to just be for pride from here on in after three consecutive uh, fiascos at the start of round two. What a shame for him after a brilliant first ride. Marco Mempor now for section four. 
Well, he is doing his level best to get through this one at least. And that might well be the only section he gets through if he can manage it. He's only got 15 seconds. We saw how tight it was on time for Matteo Grattarola before him. He needs to be swift through to the finish here. Time ticking away for Marco Nempor. Oh, what a brilliant ride to the exit gate there from the young Austrian. A wild card here today. And it is going to be a failure in section five. Obviously, runs out of time. But full credit to him. He wouldn't give up right to the last. It is a single drop mark in section four. Moves him on to 16 for the run. Obviously, the five marks for uh, not being able to attempt section five. So 21 marks his score in round two. And that moves him on to 34 overall. So currently bottom of the pile on 34 is uh, Marco Mempor. Matteo Grattarola moves up into eighth position and Toby Martin into seventh. But take nothing away from what this young man has been able to do this evening. He wasn't really expected to compete. He's got very little experience. A uh, few uh, appearances in the Spanish Championship and uh, obviously uh, competes at uh, trial two level uh, in the uh, the World Championship during the summer. His first appearance in the X trial World Championship and uh, Marco Mempor at very least gave an excellent account of himself in uh, round number one. And if the three riders sitting there, the uh, lowest seeds to round two, is the only one who doesn't look to have a glum face. Uh, Matteo Grattarola looks like he's just swallowed a wasp. Toby Martin is far from pleased with what he was uh, able to do either. Big, big scores for the uh, first three riders out in this round number two. Matteo Grattarola was the, the first to uh, tackle the sections, having been uh, last in the opening round. And uh, he was able to get through section three clean. That was some, uh, some good work from him. But apart from that, uh, a pretty tough uh, second round as well. Failures in sections two and five. Toby Martin with three failures, sections two, four and five and Marco Mempel with four failures. That's been the, uh, the difference between the first three riders out in this second round. And now it's the battle of the big guns. The six men who were separated by only five marks in the opening round tonight. And they will all now contest places in the grand final. Adam Ragger first up of them. Four marks down on the qualification cutoff after his opening ride. And remember, he missed out on qualification to the grand final at Extra Barcelona. Down in fourth position, ending his run of uh, 43 consecutive podium finishes. Raga will be keen to bounce back for a top three finish here tonight after fourth position at uh, Extra Barcelona. That was his worst result since Sheffield 2014. I was there that night and the the shock was palpable. There's another shock at Extra Barcelona. Raga keen to avoid the same fate tonight. And he needs to be real perfect. Because Marseille, we saw first time out in Barcelona just how strong he can be. Adam Raga has got four marks to make up on him. That's a significant margin. Even if Aniel Gelabert makes some mistakes, which may well be the case in a more difficult second round, he's still got uh, Bruno Bincaz and Jaime Busto between himself and the top three positions as well. Section one. Raga, not always the fastest through the sections, but he's going to need to be in round two because there's not a lot of time and there is a lot of section. <laughs> there's a, an awful lot of modules for the riders to uh, tackle here. Adam Raga, section one. Options for strategy, of course, as Raga takes uh, two marks, one for leaning, one for footing. So he will get out of section one, but it's with two marks. And that's more than either Matteo Grattarola or Toby Martin. It's a bad start, frankly to his second run for Adam Ragger. Now moving straight on to section two. This has been failed by all three men. And this is where you say, a section this long, a section that so many riders have struggled with, can Ragger make the difference to bring himself into contention for a place in today's grand final? Or would he be better off banking the time for the remaining three sections that have, might potentially be more achievable? Two and a half minutes on the clock. Still the rest of section two, and indeed three sections after it. So. Not a lot of time at all, and Raga used a fair amount there for section one. On he continues. Section two. Try and avoid taking marks for leaning here. Well, that's not possible, and in fact, he goes down. 
the fourth rider to fail section two. He races straight towards the bike because he now needs to get it to the, uh, the next section, section three, with only two minutes to try and tackle three sections. Adam Bragger then on 18 marks his progressive score. Even uh, three failures couldn't drop him to the bottom of the pile, but uh, he would rather have his eyes set in the opposite direction. Section three, clean by Matteo Grattarola and Toby Martin, and boy could Adam Bragger do with a clean here. Seven marks after two sections of round number two. It's more than either Toby Martin or Matteo Grattarola were on at the same stage. Consolation for Ragger is he outperformed them uh, quite comfortably in the opening round. So he is well clear of the three men behind him. The real target is to pass Bincaz, Busto, Marseille and Jellabert to uh, try and get into today's grand final. We'll be relying on errors from them already coming back from a deficit. The side of the section a breaking way there as Ragan landed. That's the force he was pushing his way through in section three. And he's done so with a minute. And I suspect he will use this minute to uh, complete section four and may well be another victim of the, uh, of the stopwatch. I can't see him getting time to even think about section five. So it looks like it could be a five uh, mark score for Adam Ragan there. And the opening round may well be decisive. Raga onto 18 marks after a clean last time out. Seven in this uh, second round thus far. 30 seconds on the clock. Up he goes. Easy enough for Raga. He clears that well and truly. Doesn't need to uh, take any marks for leaning or footing there. Up to the top of the section, the highest point now. And now on his way back down. Being given an indication by Sergio, his uh, assistant. How long he's got? It's not long. Oh, and he gets through to the exit. The whole bike these days has to get out of the section in order for the, uh, the riders to have be, to uh, be considered that they've completed it. And Raga just about made it in time, but he almost went down. And had he gone down face first, he would have been in some real difficulty there. He was rushing because he was tight on time. And that's because he lost plenty of time in the opening two sections. So seven marks there in the first four. He won't uh, even tackle section five. 12 marks his score for the run. It's the best of anyone thus far. And it leaves him on a uh, combined score of 23 marks. So 23 marks for Adam Raga. Remember, Gabriel Marseille and Agnol Jalabert finished on seven in round number one. So uh, they've got a fair bit of ground over Adam Raga. Bernard Kaz is next up. Scored the same 11 mark tally as Ragger in the opening round, but with the disadvantageous first starting position of the uh, two of them, uh, he was uh, out through the section's fifth and Ragger was out through the section's sixth. He got the advantage for round two in, in that tie break. So uh, fifth seed to this second round is Bernard Kaz, but the same score as Adam Ragger. He'll need to beat 12 marks here if he wants to stay in front of him. Oh, okay. Busto, Gabriel Marseille, Aniel Jellabert and Tony Bowe still to come. They're the targets. As Bincaz slips down to a single mark for leaning. Drops the sump onto the uh, top of the rock. Making his way though through. Back to ground level for the final assault. Marco Mempor failed this section but Adam Racker got through it with two. Grattarola with one. And Toby Martin was clean so it can be done but... Uh, Bincaz already with a single mark to his name, so he's not going to match Martin's efforts. Those loose stones, I think, almost uh, catching out his assistant, trying to get into position for the remainder of the section. Almost a minute used already. Wow, racing through to the finish, Bincaz completely ignoring some of those rocks at the end. As well to stay up in the section and get through to the finish with just a single mark. So a good finish to that section for Bing Kaz. He'll be perhaps a little bit disappointed to have dropped a mark. Now straight into section two. Failed by all four men before him. See if Bing Kaz can do any better. He's already ahead of Adam Ragger, which is potentially important. Potentially disastrous as far as Ragger is concerned, of course. Five mark score wouldn't be a problem for Bing Kaz here, as long as he cleans the next two. Single mark drops thus far. 
If Binkas spends too long in section two, he's going to have a hard task of uh, doing sections three and four. And he's stuck in between the two trunks. Now manages to dislodge the front wheel and bridge up. He's got to lean back and forward almost in, synchro uh, in synchronicity and he's unable to do so. It's a five mark score for Benoit Binkas, but he wasted a lot of time, you would suggest, in that section. And he's got to clean the next two. He's got two minutes to do it. Similar position to Adam Braga. Any drop marks here, though? And that will leave Binkas uh, again level with Raga. And Raga would have the advantage with the poorer starting position. So the same advantage that Binkas had first time out is the advantage Raga has now got here vagaries of the, uh, the regulations as uh, Benoit Binkaz prepares for this step. Up he goes. Still hasn't uh, taken him up for leaning in this section. Three riders have been clean before him through here. Binkaz needs a clean to remain ahead of Adam Raga. Still looking good at this stage. Frenchman now with Sherco. Sherco debut last time out at X-Trial Barcelona. There's only a couple of marks from those podium places. It's going to be a tight run thing again in round two, you fancy, here in Wiener Neustadt. Clean in section three for Bruno Binkas. Six marks his score still for the run. 17 overall. Raga finished on 23. So Binkas has got five to play with, but with only a minute and two sections on the board, I think he's going to be another rider who won't get a go at section five. Section four then, he needs to clean this one. Step here. A couple of riders are marked. Could be a potential risk. Oh, momentary, momentary hesitation at the top there for Binkaz, where he looked like he might have to take him up for leaning. And then I thought he was going to catch the sump on the way forward. And that would have been even worse, because it would have likely knocked him out of the section. But he manages to just about save it. And Binkaz up to the highest point in the section now but he's got a lot of work to do and not a lot of time to do it. 10 seconds shows. He's being given the advice from his assistant and Binkaz is out of the section. It's a failure in section four and that will be a failure in section five as well. So 10 more marks to be added to the score of Bunwa Binkaz. He'll finish on 16 for that second run and that will move him on to 27 overall. So Adam Raga has gained one position back. He moves up into fifth. Binkaz slips down to sixth place. Your new leaderboard then, Adam Raga 23, Bruno Binkaz 27, Toby Martin 30, Marco Mempor 34, and uh, Matteo Grattarola on that same 34, but ahead of Mempor on countback. Four riders still to come then. Jaime Busto is next up. Podium finisher, of course, at the opening round. Extra Barcelona. Conceded second position in the latter stages of that uh, X trial. Wow, rushing through early on, throwing caution to the wind. He's been given three marks for that uh, series of rocks at the beginning. I always feel as though he was just uh, racing through to try and bank some, uh, some time for the remainder of the run. It'll work as a strategy if he can now get through this section and use that time in the remainder. But any further drop marks, and it'll be a five mark score here for Jaime Busto. Boy, oh boy, he's got to avoid the sump. He's done so. Good work from Jaime Busto. It's an ideal start to the run with three drop marks. That's one more than Adam Raga. And effectively, uh, the two of them are level now with uh, four sections to go. Raga failed two of them and cleaned two of them. There's a drop mark. First drop mark of this section two for Jaime Busto. So uh, Busto on to 14 marks. If he ends up scoring the same as Adam Raga for the remainder of this run, Raga will move above him in the pecking order, and that'll be another place gained by Raga. And we'll move Busto another position closer to elimination before today's grand final. Big step, well made. Good landing, single drop mark for leaning. That'll move him on to two for the section by my reckoning. Move him on to five overall. Could he be the first man to conquer section two? How long will it take him to do so, and what will that leave him in terms of time for the remainder? Three marks, actually, is, is given by Moreno Piazza. So any further drop marks here for Busto, and he will become the sixth rider to fail section two. Up he goes, though. Great work from Busto. 
brilliant ride in the end from Jaime Gusto in section number two. Wait for confirmation of the uh, progressive score. Three marks is indeed given, so as I said, and that moves him on to 16 and now. But it means he's only got two minutes for the remaining three sections. I think he's in quite a good position here, having got through that section two. It was looking bleak for him after section one, but the first rider through section two, Jaime Busto. Seven marks now to play with, three sections to go. So if he can clean the next two, he will finish ahead of Adam Ragger. Regardless of what happens in that section five, even if he doesn't get time to tackle it, he's got uh, two minutes for three sections, but Ragger was in the same position. And uh, Musto is too much better off compared to Ragger at the same stage. He's racing through in section three. Job done there, fifth rider through clean. Six marks still the score, 16 overall. Seven still up on Adam Ragger. Jaime Busto then in to section four now. Another long one. Step here that's caught out a couple of riders, but uh, Adam Ragger was clean through section four. Busto needs to do the same. Slender margins now. Busto drops uh, more than two marks here. He would need a result from section five, and uh, nobody's been able to get one. And he's only got 30 seconds now on the clock. So he needs to focus on this section four. And afford to drop one mark, but nothing more than that. 25 seconds remaining. Six more would move him on to 22. That would be okay. But if he drops two marks here, it's going to be a failure in section five. That will push him behind Raga in the pecking order. So it's tight here. Battling over fourth place as things stand. Jaime Busto makes his way through to the finish and it's a clean in section four. And Busto remains above Raga in the pecking order. He's going to have to give up section five. But he will stay ahead, crucially, of Adam Raga, despite the five mark score that he'll be given for that fifth section. 21 the score compared to Raga, who finishes on 23. And Bunuar Binkaz, who drops behind Ragger on 27. That's your current pecking order from fourth position down. Will that be good enough for Jaime Busto? An 11 mark second run. Only one failure. First rider to only fail one section in round number two because Adam Ragger failed both sections two and five. Busto threw caution to the wind in section one. That gave him more time to then approach section two, and he was the first rider to make it through. And that's what's put him in a strong position and given him every chance of making up some marks against Marseille, Gelabert, and Beau, who are still to follow. 14 marks to play with for Marseille, who'll be next out. This is Adam Ragger, showing what he could do with back-to-back -back cleans in sections three and four. The problem for Ragger is that Busto went on to match him, and since Busto had saved two marks in section two, that was enough for Jaime Busto to remain in fourth position. Busto on 21, Raga on 23, Vincas 27, Toby Martin 30, and then Matteo Grattarola 34 and Marco Mempel the same. Three men still to come then. First chance for Gabriel Marseille to book his place in today's grand final. He was third in the opening round, only one mark back though from teammate Tony Bow, the winner of round one tied with Aniel Gelabert on seven. The target score is 21 to beat. And if Gabriel Marseille finishes this second round with less than 21 marks on the board, he will go through to today's grand final. 23-year-old Galician, who was so strong at extra Barcelona first time out and all of that despite carrying a knee injury. His first round started very poorly in the Palau San Jordi, but he bounced back and then uh, really put in a stunning second round to get himself onto the podium, led the grand final after the opening two sections. And it was only later on that uh, he began to slip up midway through the grand final only to recover second place after a couple of errors from Jaime Busto. Busto made errors in this section one. And Gabriel Marseille too has conceded a mark here. It's eight marks now, the score for Marseille. 
time it was to only failed one section. How many will Marseille be able to complete as he defends what is now a 13 mark advantage over Jaime Busto? Plenty of work to do in section one. It is a long one. Busto lined himself up and just shot straight forward to the exit and uh, largely abandoned some of the rocks towards the end, just glancing them as he made his way through. Gave him plenty of time to then take on section two. That's another mark given to Gabriel Marseille. So two marks for section one for Marseille. Same score as Adam Ragger. One mark poorer than uh, Vincas and Gratarola. Toby Martin was clean through that one. So, although Martin suffered three fiascos, he did have a couple of strong rides in sections one and three. Marseille now embarks on section two. Five riders have failed this one. Only Jaime Busto has made it through. Marseille looking to emulate him. First drop mark, one for leaning. Settles the bike on the sump inching forward two and a half minutes on the clock up he goes another drop mark for leaning i would suggest we'll wait for confirmation of that it is indeed so two marks now for gabriel marseille section number two crucially crucially busto got through this one with three marks marseille looking very good at this stage still two minutes just over two minutes on the clock does need to get through sections three and four as well. Section five, I think, is going to be a write-off for everyone in this uh, second round. Marseille pushing on through. Brilliant work from him. Now, he hasn't got quite as much time for sections three and four as Jaime Busto or Adam Raga did previously. And those were the two men that cleaned both of them. Marseille, though, in a strong position at this stage. Four marks from his second run. Moving him on to a score of 11, Busto finished on 21. So he needs to get through two of the remaining three sections, but how he gets through them doesn't really matter. It's, uh, it's about trying to be clean and remain ahead of Jaime Busto. 10 marks to play with. Going to be a failure, you fancy, in section five, because he's going to run out of time. So it's about keeping the scores as low as possible in this one and then making sure he gets through section four. Five riders have already cleaned this one. Oh dear, that's bad news. Bad news indeed, because the two marks he made back on uh, Jaime Busto over the last two sections have been squandered. One for leaning, one for footing. Marseille, and that you'd have to say is time pressure. Marseille dropping two marks in section three, only the second rider to drop any marks through there. Moves him on to six, the same score as Jaime Busto at the same stage of round uh, number two. Thankfully for Marseille, he has an advantage carried over from the opening round, and that advantage was three marks, so that's what he's got in his pocket now. 13 the score. He needs to get through this one with a maximum of two to remain ahead of Jaime Busto and book his place in today's grand final. If he drops more than two marks, Busto will move above him in the classification. Less than 20 seconds on the clock. It's going to be a tight finish here for Marseille. High pressure situation for him. Every chance, of course, that either Gelabert or Bo might slip up, but he wants to take this place in the grand final in his own hands. Is he out of the section there on the landing? Well, for my money, he was. But he's able to continue on. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, a nasty fall for Gabriel Marseille in section number four. Great to see him straight back up to his feet. That was really alarming, landing on his stomach like that. He runs out of time, and that's because he did such a good job in section two. But uh, it left him a little bit on the back foot for the final two sections. He's disappointed. It'll be uh, 11 marks uh, after the observations in section four, but obviously, he fails to tackle section five. So that moves him on to 16 for the run. Same score as Benoit Vincas, five worse than Jaime Busto. And uh, moves him on to 23 overall. It might still be good enough. There is a chance that Annie Olgelabert will find the going every bit as tough in the second round as a couple of the riders before him. But we have a new pecking order and Jaime Busto is the first man to confirm his place in today's grand final. Busto on 21. Marseille on 23, same score as Adam Raga. So uh, Raga will also move above uh, Marseille, courtesy of the superior performance in uh, round number two. So Marseille drops from third to fifth. 
Ragger up into fourth place, so if Gelabair makes a mistake here, that will open up the door to Adam Ragger to qualify to the grand final. Looks like Gelabair versus Ragger as things stand then. Those qualification places. Four minutes, five sections. Oh dear, and a disastrous start for Annie Old Gelabair. Flying forward, back up to his feet, but he looks to be in some discomfort. He gives a nod to his assistant to confirm he's okay to continue, but he does so, five marks worse off. 12 already his score then, he's got four to complete. And my goodness me, uh, he's only got uh, 10 marks to play with compared to Marseille. So he can afford to fail two, but the other two would need to be clean. You'd almost feel that uh, just taking the five mark score from section two might be worthwhile. Sections three and four have looked far more achievable. And if he has a good amount of time on the clock, that might be exactly what the doctor ordered. Not good to start with a failure completely, and particularly not in that fashion. It was a nasty spill. Jellabert takes a single mark early on in this section two. I think the trick here for Jellabert is not to waste too much time on this one and to try and take his advantage. He had four marks over Raga after the opening round. He's still got three marks over him as he goes down to a failure in section two. He's still got three marks over him in this uh, second round. Or drop three marks to him, I should say, in uh, section one. But that still leaves him a hit. Bad start. Section three, though. And that is much more of a problem than anything we've seen so far because he will move on to 18. And remember, Gabriel Marseille, Adam Raga finished on 23 apiece. So any failures in the remaining sections, and I'm afraid that Aniol Jellabert will drop back down the order. So my theory of him being clean in sections three and four to qualify has been rather scotched by a single drop mark right on the very first step of section three. Section four still to come. He's going to need to get through section five, and nobody's even tackled it, really. Daniel Gelabert, after such an excellent opening round, is falling victim to what is a, uh, a very tough second round and very tight scoring. Adam Racker doing a great job with 12 marks. Daniel Gelabert rushing on, weaving away. Two sections still to come. Two marks his score given in uh, section three. That moves him on to 12 for the run. Moves him on to 19 overall. So he's only four marks to the good against uh, Raga and Marseille. He's got to complete the remaining two sections. So he really needs to rush through this one to try and give himself a shot at section five. But everyone's failed there because they haven't had a chance by and large to, to even think about the section. One minute to go for Annie Olgelabert. He needs to be racing through this one. Even if he cleans it, a five mark score in the uh, remaining one would leave him on 24. That would drop him not only behind Busto, but also behind Marseille and Raga. So a place in the top three depends on him having the time to tackle section five. Still over 30 seconds to go for section four. He's looking good in this one, but it's about what's still to come. 30 seconds. Those two failures in the first two sections proving costly. Aniol Jellabert. 15 seconds now on the clock. He's not going to make it through section five. But he does make it through section four. It's a clean in section four. He waits for the crowd. He's not even going to embark on the start of section five. Because they're just in now sounds anyway. So a first clean, but he had to wait until section four for it. And unfortunately, that will mean that uh, Annie Olgelabert drops behind both Adam Raga and Gabriel Marseille on 24 marks. And that uh, sees Adam Raga return to the podium as he books his place in today's grand final. Busto 21, Marseille 23, Gelabert 24, Adam Raga. Moves up into third position. As Annie Old Jellabert drops down. 17 marks for his second run. Placing him behind Adam Raga. 
and Gabriel Marseille. So, it's now a battle between the two Repsol Honda men for the last place in the grand final. Busto and Raga are through. Will Tony Bow be through as well? Scrappy start. Two drop marks. One for leaning, one for footing. Nervous start to section one for Tony Bow. Six marks he scored in round one. So obviously the target total is 23. It's a big score, but nobody's had time to tackle section five. So everyone's taken a five there. So when it looks like you're in a good position to qualify, you then have to negotiate those final sections under a great deal of time pressure. Bo won't be delighted about his start there, but it is the same score as Adam Ragger before him. And obviously, Gabriel Marseille, target really on 23. Up goes Tony Bo then to embark now on section two. Marseille took two marks in this section. Bo has a single mark lead over Marseille following the opening round. Takes a mark for leaning there, lands it on the sub, but he'd been clean up until then, so he's doing better than anyone else has managed so far in section two. Two men have made it through. Jaime Busto with three marks, Gabriel Marseille with two. This second round really plays to the strengths of Tony Bo. A lot of elements to complete in not very much time, and this is where Bo generally excels, and he's doing so in section two. Single drop mark, three marks for the run, nine overall. Better than anyone had managed at the same stage, Marseille was on 11. Gabriel Marseille, remember, failed the final two sections. He dropped two marks here in section three. Bo, if he can run through it clean, will already be guaranteed his place in today's grand final. Nine marks his combined score. Gabriel Marseille finished on 23, so 13 marks to play with and three sections with two minutes still on the clock. I think Gabriel Marseille is staring the exit door in the face here and Tony Bow does indeed book his place in today's grand final and with two sections to spare. Three marks from three sections, better than anyone else has managed. Customarily strong performance from Tony Bow, and even two failures here would only move him on to 19. So he uh, will be going through to the grand final, and he will be going through to the grand final as top seed as well. Will he be able to win round two to take another world championship bonus point? At the moment, the top performer in round two has been Jaime Busto with 11. who has got uh, seven marks in hand to, to clear Busto. So he can afford to drop two in this section four and still win round number two. Bo putting in one of those excellent performances. He hasn't uh, failed a section thus far. He's even gonna have some time to have a go at section five here. That's brilliant from Tony Bo. Clean in section four. Three marks still to his name, nine overall. Everyone else was in the twenties. So Tony Bo has got 50 seconds to have a real crack here at section five. What a masterclass this has been from Tony Bow. Sets out his stall for the grand final. Make no mistake about that. He's here for back-to-back -back wins in 2023. Urged on now by the crowd. Tony Bow, because they know they're seeing something very, very special indeed. The second round. Nobody's got this far in to the course. What can Tony Bow now do? 20 seconds on the clock. Well, there's going to be more of this section in the grand final, so it's a good dress rehearsal for Tony Bow, who will be going through. He will be going through as top seed, but he is not going to be able to make section five in round number two. First failure of the run for Bow. He finishes on eight marks, which is 14 overall, which moves him up to 14 overall, I should say. Seven marks better than Jaime Busto, who will be second seed. And nine marks ahead of Adam Ragger, who will be third seed to the grand final. Gabriel Marseille cruelly misses out on countback in fourth position. That's your result of round number two. Marseille then with that fourth position. Benoit Bincaz dropping back. And uh, Toby Martin and Matteo Grattarola both gaining a position at the expense of Marco Mempel. Here is your confirmed result then of round number two. Tony Bow takes a world championship point, runs out of time in the end, all of them did, to uh, tackle that section five. 
But other than that, he'd only dropped three marks on observation in the opening four sections. So eight is his score in round two. Jaime Busto was second in that second round, and Matteo Gratarola even uh, performing better than Gabriel Marseille. Now it's the 16 marks for Marseille that drop him on to 23. Same score as Adam Raga, but Adam Raga uh, has the superior performance in round two, and uh, that will give him the position on the tie break. And we see that now confirmed. Tony Bowe, 14 marks over the two runs. A significant advantage over Jaime Busto. Two world championship points already banked tonight by Bowe. Jaime Busto will be second seed to the grand final. And Adam Raga just squeezes home. He was four marks better than Gabriel Marseille in round two. So when the pair are tied on 23 marks, it's Raga who takes it with the superior round two performance. Aniol Jelaber, unfortunately for him, drops from second right the way down the field and into the mid-pack down to uh, fifth place and uh, further back down the order uh, it's disappointment in the end for Marco Mempor on 34 Matteo Gratarola uh, takes eighth position seventh on 30 marks goes to Toby Martin and uh, Bernard Vincaz taking sixth place on 27.